Hello everyone, our today topic is linear transformation. We shall also learn about image and kernel of the linear transform. The basic concepts needed for the lecture are vector spaces, subspaces, linear span, basis and dimension. So I assume that you all are familiar with these topics. So let us start with the basic of mappings. Let A and B be two non-empty sets and for each element x in A assign a unique element of B let us say it y or also called the image of x then the collection of all such associations x y or x1 y1 where x1 belongs to A and y1 belongs to V the collection of all such elements is called function or mapping here the set A is called the domain of mapping, set B is the range or target set of the mapping and collection of elements of B such that for every Y there exists some X such that Y equals to FX is called image set of B. For example, consider this picture. In this picture, this cat is the non-empty set A called the domain. This frame of the mirror is the target set or set B and this image is the transformation of this cat and is called the image set. Now let us move on to the definition of linear transformation. Let U and V be vector spaces over a field K where K will be either a real or complex number in this lecture and alpha beta are the scalars belonging to that field V. Now any mapping F from V to U is called a linear transformation if it preserves vector addition that is F of V plus W equals to F of V plus F of W. Here V and W are the elements of vector space V. Now F of V and F of W are the elements of vector space U. By this condition transformation preserves vector addition we mean here that if V is the vector space together with the binary composition plus and scalar multiplication dot and U is the vector space with binary composition vector addition marked as plus circ and scalar multiplication marked as dot circ. Now vector addition of vector space u and scalar multiplication of vector space u different from the vector addition of vector space v and scalar multiplication of the vector space v. By preserving the vector addition here we means that f of v plus w is equals to f of v circ plus f of W. Because f of v and f of w are the elements of u, therefore the vector addition will be from the vector space u. f of v to u is called a linear transformation if it preserves vector addition, number one. Number two, if it preserves scalar multiplication, f of alpha into v is equal to alpha f. Preservance of scalar multiplication is same as the previous. We can say here that f of alpha into v is equals to alpha circ f of v. For simplification throughout the lecture we will consider that uh, vector addition and scalar multiplication for both the vector spaces will be same. More generally if I combine these two conditions I can say that a mapping f from v to u is called a linear transformation if and only if f of alpha v plus beta w where alpha beta are scalars equals to alpha into f v plus beta into f w. Our second definition is about linear operators. Now in this definition if vector space u is equals to vector space v what I am saying that if u and v both have the same vector space then we say that linear transformation is linear operator the examples of linear operators are uh, dy dx is the differential operator integral operator because in both transformation the domain and range will be same. So I will write linear operator as f from vector space v to vector space v. 
v let us discuss some examples let f be a transformation from vector space r3 to r square our first example is f of x y z equals to x plus 3 2 y the question is whether this transformation is linear transformation or not now here if v belongs to r3 then v will be of the type say x1 y1 this transformation will be linear transformation if for any u and v belonging to r3 f of u plus v is equals to f of u plus f of now the left hand side here is f of u plus v which is equals to say f of x1 y1 z1 for v plus x2 y2 z or equivalently x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 z1 plus z by the definition of linear transformation f of x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 z1 plus z2 equals to x1 plus x2 plus 3 comma 2 y1 plus y2 but this value is not equals to x1 plus 3 2 y1 plus x2 plus 3 2y which is f of u plus f of so this transformation is not linear transformation as it doesn't preserve vector addition let us move on to second example mod x y plus z mod x1 plus x2 need not to be equal to mod x1 plus mod x2 so in this transformation if you will try to find out f of v plus w then it come out to be mod of x1 plus x2 y1 plus y2 plus z1 plus z but this is not equal to mod of x1 y1 plus z1 plus mod of x2 y2 plus z2 so this example is also not is also not a linear transformation let us try another example f of x y z x plus y plus z 2x minus z it is easy to see here that this transformation is linear transformation u plus v equals to on solving you will get is equals to f u plus f Similarly, we can show that f of alpha into v equals to alpha f v. It is an example of linear transformation. Next definition of kernel and image of a linear transformation. So our first definition here is the image of f. The image of linear transformation f is defined as those elements of u such that f of v equals to u for some v belonging to vector space v. If you could remember our example of cat and tiger, here assume that this cat is the vector space V and this mirror is the vector space U. The image of F here is our tiger. This tiger is transformation of this cat. Image of F are those elements of vector space U such that U equals to F of V for some V in vector space here you can see that image of f is subset of vector space u our next definition is about the kernel kernel of f is defined as those elements of vector space v image of v is zero vector kernel of f here is subset of vector space v next we will prove that image of f is a subspace as we all know that any subset w of a vector space v is called a subspace if and only if w is itself a vector space and to prove that w is a vector space we have only to show that for every w1 w2 belonging to w alpha of w1 plus beta of w2 also belongs to w where alpha beta are scalars from the field f so here if i want to prove that image of f is a subspace i only need to show that if u1 and u2 are elements of image of f then alpha u1 plus beta u2 is also an element of image of f if i could prove that then i can show that image of f is a subspace let us start with some basic notation. Let V and U be the vector spaces over a field K. F 
be a linear transformation from vector space V to U and you all know that image of F is defined as those elements of vector space U such that F V equals to U for some V in vector space V. Now if assume that u1 and u2 belongs to image of f. Now u1 u2 belongs to image of f implies that there exists some v1 and v2 in vector space v such that f of v1 equals to u1 and f of v2 equals to u2 and I will show that alpha u1 plus beta u2 also belongs to image of f. So let us start with alpha u1 plus beta u2. Now u1 equals to f of v1. So I will write here alpha f of v1 plus beta f of v2. But f is a linear transformation. Therefore, this is equals to f of alpha v1 plus beta v2 by definition of linear transformation. So I can say here that for alpha u1 plus beta u2 there exists some element of vector space v such that f of those element of v equals to alpha u1 plus beta u2. But that is the definition of image of f which says that image of f contain those elements u such that there exists some element of vector space v for which f of v equals to u. And here I am also saying that there exists some element of v such that alpha u1 plus beta u2 is image of that element of v. This means alpha u1 plus beta u2 belongs to image of f. Hence, image of f is a subspace. I will repeat this again. Now, as image of f is a subspace, image of f is also a vector space. This means there exists some basis of image of f and there will be dimension of image of f. The dimension of image of f is called rank of f. Let move to next theorem. Kernel of f is a subspace. Again, I will show that for every v1, v2 belonging to kernel of f, alpha v1 plus beta v2 also belongs to kernel of f. Let us start with the definition of kernel of f. Kernel of f are those elements of vector space v such that f v equals to 0. I assume v1, v2 be the elements of kernel of f. By definition of kernel of f, f of v1 is equals to 0 f of v2 also equals to 0. Now I have to show that alpha v1 plus beta v2 is also an element of kernel of f. For this I will prove that f of alpha v1 plus beta v2 is also equals to 0. Now f is the linear transformation so f of alpha v1 plus beta v2 equals to alpha of f v1 plus beta of f v2 but f v1 f v2 are equals to 0 so therefore we have equals to 0. Alpha v1 plus beta v2 is also an element of kernel of f. So we can say that kernel of f is a subspace of vector space so kernel of f also has basis and there will be dimension of kernel of f. The dimension of kernel of f is called nullity of f. Let us explain it with the help of example. Let f be a mapping from R4 to R3. Now this mapping is a linear mapping. So our first question will be find the basis and dimension of the image of f. Let us again consider our cat whose image we have to find out. I will assume that cat be the usual basis. The usual basis here will be 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 1. So this is our cat. Now we will find the tiger. f of 1 0 0 0 is equals to 1 2 3 f of 0 1 0 0 equals to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 
f of 0 0 1 0 equals to 1 3 4 and f of 0 0 0 1 equals to 1 4 5 so we get these values from this linear transformation f x y z but as you know that image of f is a subset of a vector space r3 and the dimension of r3 is 3 so dimension of image of f will always be less than or equals to 3 but here you have four vectors these four vectors could not form the basis of the image of f because these are not linearly independent a set of vectors to be a basis it must be linear independent second it must span image of f so in order to find the basis of the image of f we will write these set of vectors as a matrix and we will reduce this matrix to echelon form we will operate on this matrix and this is our tiger 1 2 3 0 1 1 this is the basis of image of f and dimension of image of f equals to 2 which is also called rank of f basis here is vector 1 2 3 and vector 0 1 1 we will find the basis and dimension of the kernel of f now you know that kernel of f is defined as those elements of vector space v such that f of v equals to 0 so here let x y z so here let x y z t be that element of r4 such that f of f x y z t equals to 0 this means x minus y plus z plus t 2x minus 2y plus 3z plus 40 3x minus 3y plus 4z plus 40 equals to 0 we will get here the homogeneous system of linear equations three linear equations we will reduce this system to echelon form in order to find out the basis now number of equations are less than number of unknowns so this system has non-zero solution reducing it to echelon form there are two leading unknowns x and z and two free variables y and t in order to find the basis i will put y equals to 1 t equals to 0 so our first vector will be minus 1 1 0 0 again put y equals to 0 and t equals to 1 we will get our second non zero solution 1 0 minus 2 1 so this is the basis of kernel of f and the dimension of kernel of f is equals to also called nullity of f so I think it is clear that if you have been given a linear transformation then you can easily find the basis and dimension of image of n and kernel of f. So our next theorem is the rank nullity theorem which says that if you have two vector spaces v and u over a field k vector space v be of finite dimension with f be a linear transformation from v to u then dimension of vector space v equals to rank of f plus nullity of f it can easily be verified from our previous example in which linear transformation f is from r4 to r3 in that example the dimension of v that is r4 is equals to 4 and rank of f come out to be 2 and nullity of f come out to be 2 by this uh, we complete our lecture and thanks for listening please like and subscribe for more videos